Shuchi and I'm an artist that specializes in portraits and still life using oil paints and charcoal. In this video, we are going to look at a limited palette that just consists of four colors. And as a continuation to this video, we are going to use these colors and create a head study of one of the paintings of one of my favorite artists, Anders Zorn. And if you haven't already done that, please subscribe to my channel so that I could create more such content for you. So now without further ado, let's get started. Okay, to begin here, I have my three primary colors and white. So for primaries, I have yellow ochre light, I have cadmium red, and for blue, I have ivory black. And so these would act as my three primary colors. And I also have titanium white in this case, just to lighten them out in some uh, series I'm gonna show you where. You start with the color and then you, as you go down, you lighten it with white. And as you go across, you basically mix this color with the remaining colors. So here are more like combinations and here are, is more like a value scale. So I'm going to start with yellow ochre. So I'm gonna put Y over yellow ochre. Okay, and then I'm going to have my two, three spaces left for when I combine this with red. You can mix it in different proportions. So I'm going to mix it with one is to one of yellow and red, and then two is to one, and then two is to one from this side. So basically, I'm going to create three combinations of these two. So it's going to be yellow ochre plus cadmium red in two is to one, and yellow ochre plus cadmium red in one is to one yellow ochre plus cadmium red in one is to two and i'm going to do the same with the other colors as well so i'm going to start with red and then i'm going to mix yellow ochre and the same i'm going to mix black you can also keep it very simple and just make like one is to one ratio of all of them so you can mix yellow and red in just one is to one you can mix yellow and black in this one is to one so we can also do that Let's get started with the most simplest one. So I have my brush here, I'm gonna use a thin brush and I'm gonna just first start with a very simple one which is just taking the yellow ochre. I'm also gonna use some medium here which would be like one part linseed and one part gamsol and uh, which is also called a lean medium. And I'm gonna use it just for a bit of flow. And let's make sure we create a good marking. You can also use a flat brush. I think I should start using a flat brush instead. And make sure that you use enough so that you do not see the paper through it. So here is my combination of just yellow ochre. So I'm gonna take yellow ochre one part, okay? And I'm gonna start using my palette knife. And I'm gonna take one part red and I'm gonna make sure that they are equal in parts and let's mix them. So as you see that the value change, and this is what we're gonna talk about in this video. And we're gonna talk about three things. So we're gonna talk about the value change, the chroma change, as well as what's the U change. So this has become like you see here, let's put this, so this is one by one part. So I'm gonna put it here, okay? It's not the next one. Just making things simple for myself. So, so here it is, I hope you see it, okay? And next what I'm gonna do is, <clears throat> my next combination which is two part yellow ochre so I'm gonna take just the same amount and I'm gonna mix it so here is my combination of two parts yellow ochre and one part red the color is becoming warmer or cooler right and that's another thing to notice which is very interesting and now here I'm gonna take my one part yellow ochre and let's go one part by one part okay so I have one part red and then again I have one part red. So you see how the intensity has changed all of a sudden. It's not as intense as this red, but it's still it's more intense compared to this mixture. So here I have one by one part. And now I have my most intense red in this situation. And I'm gonna just put a blobby here. So one thing that I notice is this color, this color and this color, you see the combination, you feel like this is warmer as compared to this. This is warmer as compared to this. So we understand by this principle, we get to know that the colors are always cooler or warmer relative to the other color. So if I just see like just these two colors, you will see that this is kind of looking more on the yellow side, but looking a bit warmer as compared to this. And now I'm gonna just go from here to here in just five steps. I'm not gonna go beyond that. So I'm gonna start mixing in white now. 
So here I have yellow ochre that's whose value is on like the it's it's a low value. It's like it is easily lightened when I mix white and its value goes down even further. For this, my value scale is very short. Like I can only mix white until some steps. And after that, it's like, you won't be able to see such a big difference. However, in case of like a blue or a black, and even in case of red, you will see a, a much higher range. So now I'm gonna create my other value range. I'm gonna keep mixing white and I'm gonna keep mixing and creating those five piles of values before I put it on the surface. And that is because I want to see it here before I apply it over there. This definitely looks much cooler. It looks much cooler than the one above it. And now when I start adding like more white, it's gonna look, you'll see it, it's gonna look even more cooler. White makes things cooler. I'm mostly gonna add white. I, I want to create a really light version of the yellow and I'm not gonna create it like just there. I have my yellows and this is one mixed with white and I'm just gonna apply it here so just by looking at it I could see that it has become a bit towards the bluish side and I have this one I'm gonna keep creating this And you don't get a big range of value, you just get a very small range of values here. And I'm gonna apply my last swatch, which is like, just look at it and be like, okay, it's, it's almost white, but not really. I'm gonna do the same with the rest of the colors and I'm gonna add it here. And just one more thing I'm gonna do is, before I go any further, I'm gonna put these pure color swatches so that we could see that something that was looking warmer a minute ago is now looking warmer compared to this color here's my ivory black i'm gonna quickly apply this one as well Alrighty, so here i have my other colors and i'm gonna go down this way and finish the streak and i'll see you again so i wanted to quickly show you this color chart up close and i also added a strip of uh, cadmium red mixed with white and this was just to show you how it's different from the red and yellow combination that's right next to it here you can see so many things happening right the first one which you see is i mix the same amount of white in these different combinations of red and yellows but as I move further towards the red and yellow combination, I get an extended range of values. And this is just because the value of that combination is more. So you will see something similar happen when in case suppose you use cadmium yellows, which are even lighter than this ochre yellow or yellow ochre. And you will see that it gives you a much shorter range when you mix white with it. Other thing that I wanted to show you was related to the coolness or warmness of the color if you go across this way. So here you'll notice a much bigger difference. So, if I compare this color with this color, you would say like this one is more like yellowish red and this one is more like red red. So they are both warm colors, but you will see the difference in there. If if I hide this portion, you would feel that this is the warmest strip among like this four, these four. So yeah, it is the warmest strip until you actually see the cadmium red. So this this is more warmer or more yellowish red strip as compared to the cadmium red strip. So these are some of the things that you should notice when you create these color charts. And uh, you would see it's not just like yellowish and reddish. I, I feel like in, if you look at this cadmium red one, you will see it's more higher chroma compared to looking at this one. It's another way in which you can create this chart. And that is, you can create the first chart in the same way or the first line in the same way. And the next one, you do not create this value. Like you maintain this value throughout. So maybe in this case, you'll have to mix more white just to get at this level. So that's just another way of doing it. It's a strange thing, but if you go to the black and white picture of this image, here you'll see that some of those values are same right so and if i remove that black and white filter you will see that this is more chromatic as compared to this one so if you want to keep the value same but change the intensity or the you want to make some colors more intense this is what you can do so you need to see you need to remember or you can just refer to this chart and see okay how do i get to a higher chroma color how do i stay in a lower chroma color so this color chart really helps you understand how you can benefit from mixing two colors so let's get back to this chart and now i'm going to mix cadmium red and black in two is to one one is to one and one is to two proportion from left to the right 
Alright, see you soon.